Welcome to the Style Sports Hub, presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Hub podcast presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. I'm your host, Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us here today. I want to thank all of our partners that make it happen. Lake Center Home Care, Lake Sumter State College, and United Southern Bank. Our podcast available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and more. So check us out and subscribe. It really helps us out. Today I'm going to be joined by members of Tavares High School, including Tavares Head Baseball Coach Brandon Stratton. Brandon, thank you for joining us here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, Coach, uh, I want to talk about the season so far. You guys are 6-7 and as of uh, when this is airing. Uh, You guys are playing, uh, I believe it's uh, Foundation Academy, actually, tonight. You would have played by the time this airs, but uh, 6-7 and start to the season. Not bad, all things considered. Uh, You're on the last three out of five games you've won, Um, so it seems like things are trending in the right direction for you. Yeah, Um, we got off to a good start. You know, we went 3-1. and to to start the season and then we had a tough stretch we knew it was going to be a tough stretch we're playing some really good teams um you know we played a popka lake highland prep was solid mdca and then forest and we just kind of went on a skid but we've kind of recovered and bounced back like you alluded to um we're heading back in the right direction i think yeah yeah, we, you have a lot of guys on your t- team that uh, have a lot of positive vibes going on right now. As I talk about Dallas Rasmussen, uh, what a player, uh, a pitcher on your team right now. He's uh, he's having an electric start to the 2024 year. Yeah, he's hot right now. He uh, he kind of started a little slow at the plate. Um, I don't know exactly what the numbers were through a few games, but he's up to 405 now. He had three more hits last night. Like he's, he's really started to figure it out at the plate. And on the mound, he's been real steady for us, too. I have no complaints. Um, and then, of course, he's, you know, our shortstop when he's not on the mound. So he does a lot of things for us. Yeah, a lot of different things. And that, that that's great to have players that are, are diverse. You can pl- play them in different positions, uh, sort of like the Shohei Otani. A lot of these guys yeah. are uh, look up to look up to him. And, of, uh, of course, um, you know, I, I want to talk about uh, bringing uh, academics into it, too, because uh, – a lot of the guys they're they're studying today. A lot of things going on at the school currently. Um, uh, talk about the importance of academics at Tavares High School and balancing that with the athletic side of things as well. Yeah, the the freshmen and sophomores are currently testing as we speak. Uh, they're taking the best writing uh, test. I think it's maybe the first time they're doing that. So it's definitely. And then they have a game later. So you know they're they're definitely student athletes today and on an everyday basis. And we stress that we stress. You know, staying on top of the academics, that's first and and foremost. Um, It's super important, though. And, uh, you know, they kind of understand, I think, they understand most of the time that baseball is has to be secondary. It it has to kind of be seen as a privilege um, and the academics have to be taken care of. Yeah, let's talk about the last couple of years for Tavares too. Um, a, a really good, uh, a really good program. Uh, two years ago, you got to the FHSAA playoffs. Obviously, played Bishop Moore. Tough loss there, three nothing. But um, uh, you sort of took the reins of this program a couple of years ago, back in 2022. You took it over from Gavin Jones, mm-hmm. who was the head baseball coach. Sort of, uh, what was the program like then, and, and where have you built it to this point? Yeah, we were coming off a really good season in Coach Jones's last year. Uh, I think we went 15 and seven through the regular season. You know, you take that every single year. We dropped a couple of postseason games, like you alluded to. Bishop Moore, who kind of has our numbers at, at our number at Tavares. Um, but yeah, so when we when we took it over, we graduated a lot of seniors last year. We had a lot of seniors on last year's spring team, but not a lot of guys who had played a ton of varsity baseball. Mm-hmm. That's kind of flipped this year, where we have more mm-hmm. guys who are younger but have more experience playing varsity baseball last year we were older less experienced so i think that's helped in a lot of ways kind of um in year two build upon what we what we were able to do last year we got off to a really good start last year um you know really good in terms of where we expected to be uh, six and five through our first 11 games and then we just really struggled towards the end of the season yeah i think guys got sort of burnt out with the grind of the season and that's something that we talked about going into this year again we tried to you know, we got in the weight room a little bit more consistently. We had a program in the fall just trying to make sure that our bodies were a little bit more prepared for the grind of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I hope that, you know, that pays dividends, that experience last year, knowing what it's like, especially because we do have a lot of baseball games coming up in April. Um, it's going to be a lot of baseball. And even if it's not going super well for a game or two, you know, we just got to kind of try to stay steady, stay up. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're heading in the right direction. We're, we're young. Um, I think these guys are having fun playing, and I think we're we're moving well. 
Yeah, we're going to be talking to some of those guys coming up as well. Darian Henderson, Kyle Dunn, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of those guys. Later on, we're going to be talking to track and field star Carter Griffin as well here on the Sports Hub. So a uh, lot, lots of great stuff coming up. Coach, uh, of course, we uh, we love having you here and, and talking about Tavares baseball. Uh, uh, going through the challenging part of the season where you were on that five-game losing streak, what, how do you keep your team motivated in, in, uh, in positions like that? What are your philosophies that you tell your team? Well, I mentioned steadiness a little bit. We try not to get too high, not to get too low, not too high on wins, not too low on losses, even when they're stacking up one way or the other. Um, and just trying to stay consistent with the way that we operate on a daily basis in practice, the energy that we talk about on a daily basis. Uh, we try to highlight the things that are going well, that are good within a game, um, even if the final score doesn't look great on our side, whether it's we lose by one or two or we lose by you know eight or nine. We try to pick out the positives and really focus on those things and then, you know, hit on the negatives the next day during practice and, and our, our practice structure. So just steadiness, trying not to get too high or too low, talking about the length of the season, you know, convincing these guys that it's going to be, you know, a lot of baseball games left. There's no reason to get get down at this point. Yeah. As far as your career, what did you uh, what were you doing before you were the head baseball coach at Tavares High School? When I uh, graduated from college in 2019, I moved back down to Florida. My parents were living in North Carolina. I lived there briefly. Came back down to Florida because I knew is where I grew up. I grew up in Apopka. Um, and so I had connections down here. So I immediately jumped on board at Windermere High School with Coach Lasseter over there. Um, I was the JV pitching coach for two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during my second year, I got a teaching job at Tavares. And... Um, was approached by our principal and, and Coach Jones that they were interested in keeping me on board as a teacher and then bringing me on to the varsity staff as an assistant coach with the idea in mind that as long as things went well, that I would uh, take over the following year as the head coach. And so couldn't really pass on that opportunity. Absolutely. And you're doing a great, great job. And we're looking forward to talking with the rest of your team. We've got Darian Henderson coming up next on the Sports Hub. So stay tuned for that. Is pain or restricted range of motion keeping you on the sidelines? Get back in the game with expert orthopedic care from UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics provides robotic assistic surgical joint repairs and replacements, post-operative care, and inpatient rehabilitation services, all close to home, right here in Lake and Sumter counties. And for those unexpected injuries, UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics offers convenient walk-in and same-day appointments. To learn more or to schedule an appointment with one of their specialists, call 352-323-5665. All right, everybody, we are back on the Sports Up podcast. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Coppola. We're talking with Tavares High School and head baseball coach Brandon Stratton also is talking right now with Darian Henderson. And Darian, thank you for coming on to the program with us. Thanks for having me today. All right, Darian. Uh, well, you're off to a roaring start to your season. You've pitched uh, nearly 10 innings this season. You have 11 strikeouts, a 1.50 ERA. You play first base. You do a lot of stuff for the Tavares Bulldogs. Can you explain your season so far for us? Yeah, it's been um, it's been rolling so far. Uh, defensively over there at first base, uh, I feel like I've done pretty good with digging up balls and coming in the foul territory to catch them. Um, Pitching-wise, you know, the ball's been feeling good coming out of the hand and just want to keep it going for the rest of the year. Yeah, you're, again, off to a great start. You got your first start last week as well, which is really, uh, really exciting in the 2024 season. Explain that for us. How was that? Yeah, it was great. Um, I always love a challenge. And coming in to face Vel um, Bellevue, that was an 8-3 and three team, um, I just knew I had to dominate and stay confident and believe in myself. Yeah, you, you pitched a great game. You talk about this player, Coach. Uh, he came into this year um, at nine innings pitch, 1.50 ERA. I don't have any complaints about that, I would imagine. No, not at all. He's been uh, he's been great. You know, on the mound, he's he's thrown a lot of strikes. He's he's gotten weak contact. We've made plays behind him. Um, like you mentioned last week, he he got the call against Bellevue, an eight and three team at home, and he did a really good job through uh, almost three innings. And we ask him to do a lot too. You know, we ask a lot of a lot of guys, but you know, last year he was a sophomore on varsity, ended up getting 50 at bats or so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we think that's going to pay dividends later on in the season. And on the mound, you know, he learned from last year as well, and he's just continued to get better and better. How long have you been playing baseball? 
probably since about five or six years old. Uh, my parents put a bat in my hand really young, and it's just been going ever since. Never wanted to think about another sport, and it's been it's been great. It's awesome. What do you think about Coach when he came on uh, a couple of years ago? Of course, uh, he, he's uh, he's done some great things for the Tavares baseball program, and you guys got a lot of uh, excitement going on in the program right now. Yeah, Coach Stratton, he's done great uh, setting an example and leading us to where we need to be and focusing on the little things, touching up um, little mistakes, things of that nature. And it's been he's done, done a fabulous job. Well, well, Coach, what are some of the lessons that you've taught these guys, and, and how, how has Darian grown as a player? Um, I think something that we talk about a lot, uh, we say a lot, and we, we just kind of allude to a lot is fighting through adversity. Mm -hmm. um, and he mentioned it, actually, believing in himself. You know, he, he talked about the mindset that he needed to have against Bellevue and believing in himself. That's something that we talk about in every area of baseball, but especially I talk about with on the mound. You know, one of the things I say all the time is if we start to doubt ourselves on the mound, we're already kind of beat, you know. Um, so that's a big thing is, you know, fighting through that adversity. We're trying to become a tougher program. Um, we're, we're focusing on the little things that, like he said, and like I mentioned when we were talking, you know, never getting too high or too low. Yeah. You know, always believing in yourself. You know, one, one batter doesn't go our way. One mm -hmm. start doesn't go our way, you know, recovering the next day because every single day is an opportunity, especially yeah. in this game where you play two, three, four times a week. Yeah, which you are this week. So yep. uh, really exciting. You guys are going to get a lot of playing time. I think Coach mentioned you only have five practices left uh, in the regular season before the districts come along, and then uh, and then it's off to districts, and uh, who knows what happens there. But uh, really exciting things you got going on. As, as far as, as your play this year uh, and as far as the team goes, uh, what, are you, what are some of the best memories that you've made this year, whether it be on the mound, whether it be off of the, <laughs> off of the baseball diamond? What, uh, what are some of your favorite me memories that you've You've made with your team this year hmm, we have a great group of guys out there on the field but one of my memories i remember is um my one home run i've had so far this year at mdca um that's a great program over there but i didn't want that to intimidate me or scare me whatsoever and so going up there i just knew i had to put the ball in play and happen to go over the wall so it's awesome Yeah, that's all. It's always fun when you play a great quality team like that. And, and it's good to have teams like that on the schedule, I think, like MDCA and a couple of these other big programs that you play throughout the years, because because I, I think that it makes you better as a program as a whole. Would you would you is that the reason that you schedule games like that? 100%. Um, you know, our schedule is pretty good. We we play a lot of good teams, a lot of good programs. And we I talked about it last year. We've mentioned it a few times this year. You know, that's kind of where we're building to be. So being on the field with those guys and seeing, you know, how they operate before the game, how they operate during the game, the little things that they focus on, it's a good example for us to kind of to draw from. So yeah, playing playing that really good competition consistently, that's what this is all about. You know, we could we could play some You know, we could play an easier schedule, but again, like I've asked these guys, like that's just not we're, we're not going to challenge ourselves and grow grow in the way that we want to in that way. Yeah, I think it's, I think you hold a lot of respect from a lot of people for the schedule that you do play as well, uh, considering it's not a cupcake schedule or anything like that. No. Uh, you guys are playing some difficult competition, and again, I think that makes you guys better as a team uh, overall as a whole as well. Um, attending to Tavares High School when you're not playing baseball, what do you like to do off the field, Darian? I'm a big foodie. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I love to eat, um, try different things, and honestly, sleep a lot. I'm getting lots of rest. Um, obviously, I'm a bigger person, and I can't. I don't have as much energy as some of the smaller guys. So I gotta make sure to stay rested, stay hydrated, all of that important stuff. You gotta feed them so you can hit some more home runs over the wall, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Darian, I want to thank you for coming on the program today. We want to wish you the best of luck in the rest of your season. Um, any final advice you have for smaller players who are coming through? Some freshmen, some sophomores, some JV guys. What's your advice as far as what you have had to deal with in your life to get to where you're at on the varsity squad? Just keep believing in yourself. Um, keep throwing it. Keep swinging it, and stay confident. Well said, Darian. Thank you for coming on to the program today. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back on the Sports Hub next with Kyle Dunn. Are you looking for a bank with heart? For over 85 years, United Southern Bank has served businesses and families in Central Florida with excellent customer service and the latest in banking technology and products. 
USB offers free checking, high yield savings accounts, residential and commercial loans, and much more. Whatever you're looking for, USB delivers on personalized service and friendly, fast communication. Stop in to one of our 12 convenient locations or visit us online at unitedsouthernbank.com. United Southern Bank, we are united in community. Equal housing lender and member FDIC. All right, we are back on the Sports Hub podcast. I'm Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, we're talking with Tavares High School right now. Also talking with Tavares High School baseball coach Brandon Stratton. And I want to welcome onto the program Kyle Dunn, who's a pitcher for Tavares High School. I want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Kyle, uh, been a heck of a last couple of years for you, including last year. You're coming off of a um, off of a broken arm, actually, from last year. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and what the recovery was like and uh, off to a great start this year. Yes, sir. So over the summer, I was pitching in the first tournament and I'd had a, I had a little bit of pain in my arm and I thought it was just like a muscle tear or something like that. So I was going to play through it. Um, I threw a pitch and my arm's shaking, my hand's shaking. So that's not really a great sign. So, but I said I needed to play through it. So I, I get out of that inning and, um, I go to my coach and I'm like, Hey, I, I'm not, I can't throw anymore. I'm, I'm done. And he's like, you can't give me one more inning. And I'm like, no, I, my arms hurt. So I go and I play first base for the rest of that, for the rest of that, uh, tournament. And the next day we come back and it's really hard for me to throw. Like I could barely throw. And at that point, my mom's like, we need to take you to the doctor. And I'm, and I told her, I was like, mom, no, I'm fine. Um, but we get there and I play on it for three weeks. I pitch with it. I throw with it. I, I use it just like normal, um, for three weeks. And then finally there's just so much pain that I need to go to the doctor and I go to the doctor and he comes in and I have full range of motion and he goes, you broke your arm. And that was a really scary moment for me. I uh, just kept thinking, what if I never play again? Mm -hmm. And I, that's, that was the first question I asked the doctor. I was like, am I gonna be able to play again? And he said, yes, you've, it's already healing. So the recovery process, it was about a month. Um, for the first two weeks, I couldn't do anything. Couldn't swing, couldn't throw, couldn't do anything. But um, I feel like that really had my mind in the right spot, um, breaking my arm. I took that chance this summer and worked on more of myself. So I worked on losing a lot of weight and also worked on strengthening my body mm -hmm. since I couldn't do things with my arm and I couldn't play baseball. I really worked on myself. So after that month, I could finally swing again. And we came back in the summer and I was able to swing for like the last week of summer. That's great. That's great. And you worked hard to get back. Talk about this guy's work ethic to, to come back from something like that because that's a scary situation for any player. Yeah, we didn't know we didn't know what we were gonna get honestly because in the fall he wasn't able to really do much. You know, his biggest contribution so far has been on the mound, and he wasn't available to do that in the fall. But um, no, he's bounced back great. You know, he's a resilient kid. You know, a lot of toughness in this kid right here. Not not afraid of adversity. Sounds like he's learned a lot from it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I think that injury. You know. As unfortunate as all injuries are, you know, they can also provide great lessons. What did what did it feel like when the doctor told you that you're going to be fine and you're going to play again? I mean, th there must have been some sort of relief for you. Yeah, that was a big sigh of relief for me. I uh, as soon as he told me I broke my arm, my head just went back and hit the wall. Yeah. And, um, and I asked him if I was ever going to play again, and he was like, "Absolutely." And that was just a really big sigh of relief. And um, I stayed with my conditioning coach and I still go to him and he, he does like massage therapy and everything and he's really good and he's always like, hey, you listen to me, you're fine. He was really my guy for my recovery. So working with him really, it now opens a door for like when I'm sore, I need to, I need to rest, I need to, I need to take the time. So it, yeah, it was a big sigh of relief. Let's talk about the way you battled back this year. 16 innings pitched so far. You got 17 strikeouts, only four earned runs, 61 batters faced, and a 1.79 ERA. Those are great numbers to begin the season. Talk about that start to the season for this guy. Yeah, I've been a huge bright spot, you know. And uh, if you if you asked me at the beginning of the spring, would I have expected him to appear in eight of our 13 games to start the season and throw as many innings as for us as he has? I would have said no, just because, like I said, we didn't know what to expect coming off the injury and everything. And, you know, he's he sees the opportunity. He's taken it. We went to him, you know, early in the preseason, and he had some success while things weren't going great against um, Pine Ridge. Um, 
and then went back to him in the regular season. And as you can tell, we've gone back to him over and over and over again. He's answered the call every time. So he's been great. As far as the season's gone and uh, really your time at Tavares High School, what have been some of your favorite memories that you've made on and off the field so far? Um, on the field, just pitching in the game, um, just the atmosphere that the guys have in the game because, you know, it's a really competitive scene, mm -hmm. um, especially in those big games, East Ridge, uh, Leesburg, all of those games. Those are really big cross town, like really big games. So we have our guys in the outfield and you can hear them yelling when you're on the mound. So it's, it's a really nice atmosphere there. Off the field, probably like our pregame meals. Um, one time before we played at Popco, we went to Beef O'Brady's and we just all sat at the one table and just had a good time. Yeah, just the camaraderie between the team. And that's so important is building that between your team. And I think that that's something that you like to focus on, Coach. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's important. You know, they don't have to be the best of friends, but they, you know, it helps a lot when they like each other a little bit. So you try to provide an atmosphere where they can, you know, learn to like each other and become friends on the field as well. Um, you know, I think it just kind of carries over into being better teammates and just having a better daily atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. And you can see that that has, is having a an effect on the team. Six and seven currently. Um, uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. Uh, what does the outlook look like as far as the team goes? Seems like you guys are starting to come together, I would say, Kyle. Uh, would you say that the pitching staff and, and really the team as a whole is starting to sort of grind and come together? Yeah, we're really starting to heat up on the field. Um, I think it's also like our practices are helping too. We we really focus on hitting and our I mean our defense have been great, so we focus on that. But hitting is our main focus right now, and I think using the pitching machine and hitting that higher velo that we focus on has really helped us. Like our pitching staff, they've been great, and our hitting is now starting to heat up. I mean, last night we scored three runs in an inning twice, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just really, that just shows what we've been working on. Yeah, that was against First Academy Leesburg and First Academy, a, a decent team as well. Uh, they've had a, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great players come through that program the last couple of years, and uh, Colin Harrell, uh, I think, was one of them last year. Uh, just a, a really good program. So, and then you talk about what's coming up later on in the season as well. Of course, uh, Foundation Academy tonight. Uh, by the time this airs, you guys would have already played that game, but you guys got a couple of uh, other difficult games coming up this season. But that's going to prepare you headed into the districts, which uh, the district. Is is, is probably, in my opinion, one of the more difficult districts, I think, in the state of Central Florida. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, you know, Eustis and Bishop Moore are currently ranked one and two in the district. They, they're usually always, they're, they're always in the mix in that regard. Um, it's not an easy one. And yeah, the reason, you know, there is a reason to, to why the schedule gets difficult late in the year, and it is to prepare for that district tournament. You know, we don't want to you know, play lower levels of competition, make ourselves feel good going into it, and then get punched in the mouth at the beginning of a game against Eustis and not know what to do. You know, we want to make sure that we, you know, we're familiar with those battles with going through that adversity. He, he mentions adversity. When you, when you come into a game, how do you mentally prepare for that? Um, whether it's relieving or whether it's starting or, or, or how, however you end up coming into the game, how do you mentally prepare for that? So a lot of the times I'll come in in relief. So Coach Stratton will tell me to go start tossing in the bullpen. And so I'll go in there, and that's when I really start focusing on just being relaxed and being staying true to myself, like have, as he's talked about, just belief, mm -hmm. believe in yourself. Um, and then as soon as, as soon as I go back and he's like, are you ready to go in? And he's like, all right, come on. And I get that call and go up to the mound. It's, I kind of just stand there for a second. Um, especially at home games, like, or even away games, I kind of just listen to the music that's playing yeah. um, and listening to that music. And I, that gives me my chance to center myself before I start my warm up pitches and before I go in and start facing a batter. Who are some of your role models that, uh, that you like to, to focus on? Um, I, uh, I like Nolan Ryan. He's, he's a great, he was a really good pitcher. He was really dominant. He worked through a lot of, a lot of pain. He, he was a really tough guy. Um, he, he battled through tearing his UCL. He battled through tearing his hamstring. So he's, he's a guy that I really look up to. 
I think it's so important that guys like that have an impact on young players like that. And uh, he's not the only one that goes through injuries. A lot of guys, I mean, it's a long season. A lot of these guys deal with a wide range of different injuries. How important is it to have guys have role models like that, look up to people, look up to guys like yourself as well, and, and look up to people within the community as well? Yeah, super important. Um, like we talked about earlier, it's a grind, right? It's a, it's a lot of baseball in a short amount of time. Guys are going to get banged up. They're going to get hurt. Um, some of this is going to be stuff that they can play through. Um, some of it's going to be, you know, they have to shut it down in a certain in a certain area for a short amount of time. So, you know, the big thing with that when the injuries start to pile up is, you know, we have big rosters for a reason. You just call on other guys yeah. and you expect them to kind of step up. It's kind of the whole whole purpose of that, right? And always stay ready for your opportunity. What have you uh, learned from Coach? What, is, what has he taught you most? Um, Darren kind of talked about it, uh, the belief, mm -hmm. and also how much the little things matter. Like whenever you're, whenever you're on the field, whenever you're in practice, like you have to do the little things right to be able to play well in a game. Yeah. So even in practice, like when we're taking infield or when we're throwing a bullpen or something like that, hitting those spots in a bullpen, like pit, throwing the pitch where it needs to be, those things are really important. That those help you win games. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, it's just so important. Um, one last thing I have for you, I, I asked this to Darian, and I'd like to ask it to you for for your advice for younger guys coming up through the programs. Um, uh, what it was your advice to them? You've gone through a lot, uh, obviously. Last year, yeah. you thought your career might be over. Yeah. Uh, you you it wasn't over. You got some great news. Uh, what is your advice to young guys? Just battle, push through. Um, it might seem dim but just push through. Like, I mean, I got cut off the team my freshman year and that kind of lit a fire under me and I had to prove myself from that point on. So just, it might see, it might seem like it's, uh, like it's down and you'll never have a chance, but you'll get your chance. Kyle, thank you for coming on to the program thank today. You. Coach, I want to thank you for coming on to the program as well. Good luck with the rest of your season. And we can't wait to see what you guys do with the rest of the season and the districts as well. Yeah, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Best of luck to you guys. We'll come back next on the Sports Up. Nobody wants an aging family member who is unable to care for themselves to be home alone. Lake Center Home Care believes the best healing happens when you are most comfortable. The company provides exceptional personal care in the comfort and privacy of your own home. Whether you need skilled nursing, physical therapy, home health aids, or companion services, your loved ones will enjoy peace of mind knowing you're being taken care of and treated with respect and dignity. Lake Center Home Care is locally owned and managed with a team of highly qualified professionals who are passionate about taking care of their neighbors. Call 352-315-0050 or visit golchc.com to learn more about this amazing company. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sports Hub Podcast. We're on and talking right now with uh, Tavares track and field athlete Carter Giffing. And uh, Carter, I want to welcome you to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, Carter, uh, you are a javelin thrower, and wow, what a season you're having so far. Uh, you just broke the uh, the school record, which I think you already held, uh, but you uh, you broke the, the school record, 47.7 meters, which is 156 and a half feet. So uh, what, what a, I mean, wow, what... Uh, what a throw! Uh, what a thrill! Uh, describe that to us. Um. Yeah. When it left my hands, I was like, "Man, that one flew." So, I came back. I heard the mark. I was like, "No way!" Because it was my friend that had it. He broke it at states last year. He threw forty-five point eight six, and I was like, "Man!" But he was a senior, so I had to let him have it. <laughs> and so I came. I threw it. The first thing I did was like, "I have to call him." And so right after, I had to call him and tell him. It was pretty fun though. Yeah, so you so you beat his uh, beat his record and uh, forty seven point seven meters. That's a that's an amazing throw. Um, talk about uh, sort of the javelin and how long you've been doing it. Um, well, the javelin it's just a big stick. That's what I call it. I just throwing toothpicks basically. Um, I've been throwing it for about four years since eighth grade. It's been pretty fun. How'd you get into it? Um, so I started with shot put and discus, but COVID hit, and then I was like not really feeling it anymore. So my coach was like, try javelin. So I threw it. I broke that school record and it was like, hmm, this is pretty fun. So I'm going to stick with it. 
what's the art of throwing the javelin? Like, what, what, what do you do differently to, to uh, sort of, I mean, you are the number one at Tavares, obviously. Yes, now yeah. nobody's thrown it further than you have. Um, what is the art of, of throwing it that far? Yeah, it's pretty difficult, I'd say. It's a very technical event. Uh, it breaks down to a millimeter based on however you release it, really. Um, it's, it's a combination of your speed, your coordination, your rhythm, your and just your strength in general. It just looks really technical. It, it's very technical. It's very technical. It's not about your strength either. I've had some guy that was skinnier than me, and he threw it farther. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I, I threw javelin in, in high school, and really? uh, it was difficult. Um, oh, yeah. I, it, it was so difficult that I ended up sh going over to shot put, and, <laughs> and I was more successful at shot put. So, so it's just, uh, I guess it's just, the, it, it's not based off of your size, like you said. I think it, that it's based off of, how good that you can be technically with your feet, with the way that you twist your body and are able to get that stick flying through the air. Yeah. Um, how, how did you learn and, and who taught you? And um, the sort, sort of, are there any people that, uh, that helped you through? Um, yes, actually, uh, back when in middle school, there was a couple of the high school volunteers that came and helped us out. And then I took it a little more seriously starting, I mean, high school, obviously. Yeah. One of my friends who had the school record coached me, Brady Hinckley, he was pretty fun. But um, over the years, I've been to a couple clinics. I've been to up in Birmingham, Alabama with Team USA. I've been to one of their clinics. Um, I've also been with Tom Petronoff, a former Olympian. He helps me out a little bit with one-on-one -on -one sessions here and there. Any uh, any aspirations for for college as far as throwing the javelin and stuff like that? Seems, Absolutely. Seems like, uh, seems like the, that you could make some noise in the, in the regionals, maybe states this year. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. Um, I really want to go to college for it. It's just something that's just fun, and it's a hobby for me. It's not like a job or a chore. I really love it. Um, I'm trying to get in contact with a couple of coaches, but we'll just see how it plays out. Yeah, I definitely have to see how it plays out. It's uh, it's, it's such a unique thing, too, uh, with the javelin because of how technical it is. Uh, it, you, the shot put's technical, and the discus is technical. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, I think, in track and field um, is how – how important that the field events actually are because you see the track and, and, and that's fine. Everybody runs. And of course um, there's the long jump and that's technical too. People don't realize how much work has to go in, in order to be at the top of your game at Absolutely. field events, especially Absolutely. how much work do you, are you having to put in uh, to maintain that and, and be at the top of your game? Uh, a lot of work. Um, I practice basically every day. Um, it's not about how you practice, it's about how much you do it. And I'm like a firm believer in that practice makes progress. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think I'm ever going to get a position right when I throw. I just think it's going to get better and better and better. Yeah. Yeah, and you have gotten better and better and better uh, this year. And uh, you know, forty-seven point seven meters is a heck of a way to to throw a javelin. That's a long distance, um, and we'll we'll see how you stack up, especially once districts come along, and uh, hopefully you're able to make some noise there. But who are some of the people that have impacted you in your life? Um, well, probably my sister. Like she she threw javelin. She was pretty good, but I've always had a beater. Because, like, sibling competition. Right. And like I said earlier, Brady Hinckley, he was a big help. He was basically my teacher. He taught me the most. And, yeah, I think just having my friends around there has just been a positive influence and just helped me work harder. How far do you think you can go with it? Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I Sky's like the that. Limit. Uh, yeah, very exciting things you got going on. Now, what's your advice to younger guys coming through? Because you had to, you had to tr like transition and try a couple of things out until you found the sport that you were best in track and field. And I think that that's that's pretty unique uh, that you were able to do that and then focus on the javelin. And now that you're so focused on it, you're so good at it. Uh, what's your advice to these young guys? Um, just to stick with it. Um, a lot of times they quit after the first couple of days because it's, it's hard. It's not an easy event, but I just tell them to keep working at it, keep practicing, and, you know, they just keep getting better. I've had a couple of people on my team who I've been helping out started off in, like, the low 20s, now they're in the 30s, mm -hmm. and it's just been, like, prideful, not prideful, but um, humble to see that, like, I'm helping them get better. What's your favorite thing about tr the track and field, uh, field team? What, what do you enjoy most about doing track and field? Just just the friendship, really. It's just one big family, I feel like. It's not about what events we're in. It's just like we're all together. I could be in a sprint workout one day, and I'll just be talking to everybody, and we'll all be having fun. 
Yeah, exactly. I think that's a, a lot. The baseball team alluded to that earlier too, is just the camaraderie but yeah. between everybody and having a good time. And that's really what it, being a student athlete is all about, that you can have a good time, but you can also be a student, which is, is so important. Talk about the importance of your academics and mixing that also in with sports. Academics is my number one. Um, I like to take pride, I guess, in this one. But um, academics is definitely number one. I like I think I've been an all-A student since fourth grade, since I had my first B. So I like to say I'm about my game. And I just try to keep telling those young kids that keep your grades up and everything else will follow through. Absolutely. Wise advice. Carter, thank you for coming on to the program thank today. We wish you the best of luck, and uh, hopefully uh, you can make some noise in districts and potentially uh, go win a state championship this yes, year. Yes, sir. That's the plan. Absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for coming on. want to thank the baseball team, Tavares Baseball as well. want to thank all of our partners that make it happen here on the Sports Hub podcast. want to thank, of course, UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. I also want to thank Lake Center Home Care. Lake Sumter State College, United Southern Bank, and this podcast available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and more. So check us out and subscribe. It really helps us out. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you on the next edition of the Sports Hub Podcast. This has been the Style Sports Hub, presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics.